So as I mentioned in last week's video, I spent a good amount of the past month trying my absolute best to switch from Notion to Obsidian. And as you may know, I am a big fan of Notion. And I spent, what is it, the past one and a half years optimizing Notion to work for me. But because of my masochistic tendencies and concerns about Notion security and speed, I've been a lot more open about trying to find a better replacement. And I know a lot of you share similar concerns about Notion and have been asking me to check out Obsidian for a while. But I finally got to it, so in today's video, I wanted to introduce Obsidian, talk about what I was looking for in this app and how I set it up for myself, and just generally lay out the pros and cons to help you determine whether it's worth giving this app a shot. Um, I can't think of any Obsidian puns, so let's just uh, get to it. Now, Obsidian was just built by two people, Shida and Erica, and that itself is mind-blowing to me, especially as an engineer, given how powerful and well-built Obsidian already is. And on top of that, Obsidian was first released in just March of 2020, and that's crazy, right? Well, it's possible because before Obsidian, the same team built this, Dynalist. So really, Obsidian was years in the making, which is why it's come so far in so little time. And we can actually learn a lot about Obsidian from their three founding principles. Local first and plain text. At its core, Obsidian is a super powered markdown editor with minimal formatting and a few bells and whistles. And you do have a lot of control over how things look, so you can configure your own text styling or shortcuts or window arrangements. And it's local first, so instead of being stored on the cloud, your notes are stored locally on your device. This means there are far fewer security risks because our notes are not in the hand of some third party. And it means we're responsible for keeping our notes safe and secure, at least in the free model. And it also means that Obsidian always works offline, making it far faster than apps like Notion or Evernote. Links are first-class citizens. Like Rome, Obsidian is designed to use the Zettelkasten method, powered by ample use of links. So to optimally use Obsidian, instead of organizing things from the top down, you build up ideas from the bottom up by using these links to connect disparate thoughts, which are then visualized in a knowledge graph, which can really look like anything from this to this. Third, it's super extensible. Now, for those tech folks, Obsidian will remind you of an IDE, something like VS Code or um, Sublime, Sublime Text, yeah. So just like VS Code, it allows for plugins and custom CSS, so you can really morph this into what works for you. And it has a huge community that's there to share tips and hacks to make this easier. So yeah, that is Obsidian, and there's really nothing quite like it from what I've seen at least. It's super customizable, it's really secure, and it's free. But that being said, it's definitely made for power users who will actually use all of these features and who don't mind the additional setup. Now before, I'd always hop onto every single new app's bandwagon without clearly establishing what I'm actually looking for and whether that new app will actually solve my problems instead of introducing new ones. Now, my use case is pretty narrow since I'm looking to replace Notion and because there are already a lot of things that I like that I want to keep. Specifically, since I do a lot of writing, I've grown accustomed to Notion's rich text formatting, customizability, <laughs> and templating features. And almost every board I use in Notion is built upon a database that makes it really easy to see all of my notes. But of course, there are a lot of things that I don't like about Notion that hopefully Obsidian can fix. First, since Notion is not end-to-end -end encrypted, I actually worry a lot about the security of my notes. And second, because Notion lacks offline support, it can get pretty slow. And this can be disastrous when it's 2 p.m. I am finally done scrolling through Instagram, but uh, I can't get to work. And lastly, it's kind of clunky. There are a lot of things in Notion that I don't really use anymore, like all of these sections and the emojis, so I'd actually like something a bit more minimal. So given all those factors, Obsidian seemed pretty promising, but I knew heading into this experiment that I had to spend a bit of time modifying Obsidian to recreate that content calendar that I'm so used to in Notion. 
So while this took an embarrassing amount of time to complete, I am pretty satisfied with my obsidian setup and it only took five key steps to create. So hot take, I actually don't like dark themes. So Obsidian has some really nice customizable themes. The first thing I did was toggle the light mode, but because that wasn't enough, I also played with the community themes like Atom and Groovebox. There are also a lot of other settings that you can play with. My favorites were the translucent window, this outline feature, and the collapsible headings and bullet points. To spice things up further, Obsidian's community has developed so many different CSS plugins, which you can find in this repo or on the Obsidian forums. Now surprisingly, the templates that I know and love in Notion are surprisingly easy to replicate here. So first, you just have to enable templates in settings and choose where you want to store them. And once you make the template itself, save for a to-do list, you pick a keyboard shortcut to trigger it, like Command T. And finally, whenever you make a fresh note or want to add a little snippet of something, you just use the shortcut and voila! Now one of the biggest struggles when switching productivity apps is figuring out how the heck to transfer your notes. Luckily, I found this somewhat helpful script that made things a lot easier. However, if you use databases or nested pages in Notion, things are not going to look exactly the same, so you will have to spend a bit of time just reordering things for you. Now it is great that Obsidian is fully local, but that can be kind of nerve-wracking, especially if you're like me and are constantly losing or breaking things. And for me, probably the most reliable, least hands-on solution was GitHub with its version history and unlimited storage. And this uses cron jobs to work, so it is kind of complicated to set up, so I'll just link the instructions down below if you're curious. So yeah, after doing all of the setup, I was actually pretty impressed with Obsidian. It was nice. Uh, it addressed a lot of the concerns that I had with Notion and actually with Rome as well, which I tested many, many months ago. Now, unless we're just tracking our movie or K-drama watch list, our notes are probably going to have a lot of personal information that we don't want accidentally leaked. And the great thing is that'll never be a risk with Obsidian. And if you don't want to set up GitHub and still want to back up your notes, there are paid models that allow for end-to-end -end encrypted backups. And with the markdown editor and templating, I actually really enjoyed the writing experience on Obsidian. I never found myself getting that distracted here because I could hide all of those sidebars and buttons and actually focus on the act of writing. Obsidian is also highly customizable. Now for some people, this might be a disadvantage. Even for me, I'm not really sure where I fall on it, but I do like having the option to make things more minimal or functional for me. And if you consider both the insanely active online community and the fact that this app is still in its early stages, I really think it has a lot of potential to even become the next Notion. Now, as you may suspect, like many of the other apps that I try, I was not able to stick with Obsidian. But here that's not really because of any faults with the app, but rather because I am not really an ideal user for it. Now, the biggest downside for me is that this is not built off of databases like Notion, but instead it's built off of the Zettelkasten system. And while I did try to make use of the backlinks to build my own knowledge graph, it's just not something that I'm looking for, and in fact, I would say it was kind of distracting. But a lot of people like Ali Abdal and Diago Forte swear by this methodology, so it has a lot of benefits and is worth at least considering. And besides that, as we saw, setting up this app is quite tedious. And while I do like some customization, if there are too many options, I'll definitely get carried away and will end up spending all of my time playing with different themes instead of actually working. But again, this is probably more of a me problem instead of the app. <laughs> So as I mentioned before, the purpose of this video is to share my experience using Obsidian, but also give you all the information to determine whether you would be a good fit for this app, or rather whether this app would be a good fit for you. And given what I saw of this app, I would say don't get it if you want something simple, no fuss, where you can just download the app and get started. Or if you need some more advanced organizational tools like databases or Kanban boards or anything that's just more visual or structured in nature. Or if you actually want your notes stored on the cloud or at least accessible on your phone since this is still just a desktop app. 
That being said, Obsidian is one of the most impressive apps that I've seen in a long time, so I would say it's worth giving a shot if you do a lot of writing. Like maybe you're a student writing essays or taking notes, or maybe you're writing a book, or maybe you're a journalist. Not just because of the writing experience, but because this will actually allow you to use those backlinks to your favor. Or maybe you want to build a second brain slash knowledge base, and those backlinks will be critical to tying all of your different ideas together. Or try this out if you value privacy at all costs, and for you, having things stored locally is the most optimal solution. And finally, if you're really particular about how your apps are set up and you have a lot of time on your hands to tailor everything to your liking, you'll probably like Obsidian. So yeah, that's it for today's video. Now I know you guys have been asking for a very, very long time to try out Obsidian, so I'm sorry for the delay, but I hope you found this video helpful. I'm also gonna try out more of those secure Notion alternatives like Standard Notes and Joplin, so keep an eye out for those, but otherwise I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a big like and subscribe. Follow me on social media if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. that um, <sighs> obsidian, obsidian, <laughs> ah.